For this afternoon and tonight, heat index values between 98 and 104 degrees are expected in northern and central Georgia today. This level of heat may affect anyone without access to adequate hydration or effective cooling. The robotic voice on the National Weather Service broadcast tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, it's hot. But the trains keep on running. Now, to you and me, a hot day might just mean drinking a little more water, but railroads have to be extra vigilant. So grab a cold drink and I'll tell you why, coming up. It's June 15th, 2024, and we're in the city of Atlanta. The time is around 9.30 a.m., and the temperature, well, it's already in the upper 80s as this CSX local heads south to do some work in College Park, Georgia. Next up, light engines heading across town from CSX's Hal's Yard to Halsey Yard. Typical power for this job are these rebuilt SD40 E3s. Number 1704 was actually involved in a derailment at Hal's Yard in 2023. You can see it's the trailing unit in this drone footage of the scene. Anyway, it appears to be fine now. Moving on a few miles up the road, we're now at the busiest rail destination in Atlanta, Norfolk Southern's Inman Yard. Trains hauling freight and merchandise from around the country end up here. And this one is snaking its way into the intermodal terminal. Meanwhile, at the engine terminal, this is what I wanted to see. A freshly painted locomotive honoring railroaders. Unfortunately, I was too far away to get a really good shot of it, but here are a few clips that Norfolk Southern posted on its Facebook page. Of course, this is a variation of the default NS paint scheme like you see here. After that brief stop at Inman, I'm off to another railfan hotspot about 15 miles west of here. Not long after arriving in Austell, Georgia, we're treated to a horn and smoke show. And the trains keep on coming. I was here for a railfan meetup with some friends. Austell is a hot spot for rail fans because this is where the line splits. One line goes to Birmingham, Alabama, while the other goes to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Norfolk Southern also has a huge intermodal terminal in Austell called Whitaker Yard. Here in downtown Austell, you'll see a good bit of transfer jobs going between Whitaker and Inman. As our train count was increasing, so were the temperatures. The sign on City Hall said 92 degrees, but it definitely felt hotter. Now when the weather is like this, you may see employees in high rail trucks out doing heat runs. If the conditions are right, rails can actually buckle and become impassable. This buckling can also lead to a derailment if it's not spotted in time. Okay, after a short lunch break, I've changed locations. I'm now back in Atlanta, just outside Inman Yard, at a place the railroad calls Bridge. As you can see, this is where the tracks cross over the Chattahoochee River. I should also mention that, like Austell, this is another rail fanning hotspot. It's around 3 p.m. now, and according to my weather app, it's 97 degrees. So what does that mean for the rails? Well, I decided to do a little test. I brought along an inexpensive infrared heat gun to take some measurements. 
This siding is next to the crossing here, and I was able to safely get a reading of the surface temperature of the railhead, 136.4 degrees. And what about the asphalt on the road here? It was considerably warmer, 153.5 degrees. Not long after I did this, here comes another high rail truck, most likely doing a heat run. So what are workers looking for when they're on these heat runs? Well, track buckling could be obvious like in these pictures courtesy of the U.S. Department of Transportation, or a little more subtle like in this photo from Cap Metro in Austin, Texas. All right, so this isn't really my area of expertise, so I referenced the book The Complete Field Guide to Modern Derailment Investigation by Gary Wolf to learn a little bit more about this topic. Some other signs that the rails have moved or expanded because of the heat would be cross ties that have shifted. Rail may also start to look kinked, what's called nervous rail, and the rails may have even moved under the spikes or anchors. According to the book, track buckle derailments usually happen between 2 and 6 p.m. As for location, the book says track buckles most often happen in curves, although straight track can also be affected. It's also common to see them at the bottom of a long gradient or around bridges. And as you might imagine, a long train creates friction and can also raise the temperature of the rails. As a precaution, railroads will sometimes issue speed restrictions over certain sections of track during hot weather. All right, it was definitely hot, but I don't think there were any speed restrictions today. Here's one more catch from Bridge with a Frankenstein BNSF engine. This train also had some interesting rolling stock towards the end. The old Southern Railway car here looks like one designed to haul steel coils. Okay, time for one last stop at Inman Yard to see if anything's changed. Nothing new here, but I never pass up an opportunity to record one of Norfolk Southern's cabless slugs. This one is being remotely operated by this employee using a special belt pack. Now these slugs have no diesel engine and are electrically powered by the mother unit they're attached to. And one of the last catches of the day was on the outskirts of Edmund Yard at Hal Y. CSX's Hal's Yard is maybe a mile north of here. CSX has kind of an odd setup here. You'll often see trains having to get high of a switch then shove back into the yard. So as we wind down this rail fanning adventure, just how hot did it get today? Today's high temperature of 97 degrees occurred at 2.53 p.m. All right, I know it gets hotter than 97 degrees in other parts of the U.S. in the summertime, but hopefully this still gave you a good look at how railroads deal with high temperatures. I never really gave it a second thought until recently. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.